This week on TGC News, Magpul drops a mountain of new stuff, a new long-range cartridge from Winchester, and tons of Gundustry news. IWI takes Battle Proven and combines it with innovation with guns like the Tavor X95, the 7.62 chambered Tavor 7, and how about a bullpup semi-auto 12 gauge called the TS-12. If you like classics, how about a Galil Ace? Or the freshly updated Jericho Enhanced? And of course, the Optic Ready Masada. No matter what you're looking for, IWI makes something that fits your needs. To learn more, go to IWI.us. Welcome back to another episode of TGC News, the only gun news show that covers things you actually care about. My name is John Patton. Before we get into things, I want to make you guys aware that not only is the Big Boar Barrett giveaway still going on, but we are also now uploading our videos to Warrior Poet Society Network. With the age of censorship growing, we have decided to partner with a really strong group that runs the show over there. Link in the description, plus a discount code if you want to join up for their paid content. Now, how about some gun news? Winchester has a bunch of new stuff, and they finally announced the specs on the 6.8 Western cartridge, and it looks pretty rad. We covered the addition of the cartridge to the SAMI spec, that's like the standardization body, not too long ago, and now it's actually here. On the surface, it's a 6.8 diameter projectile being fired out of a short action length cartridge, similar in length overall to the 6.5 Creedmoor, and claiming good terminal performance for long-range hunting, and on top of that, precision for match situations. At launch, there are three offerings. A 165 grain AccuBond LR, meant for extended range hunting. Then you have the silver tip version using a 170 grain expanding bullet, and then the 170 grain match bullet using a Botel hollow point. In the promo video, they brag about the cartridge having more energy at 500 yards than a 6.5 Creedmoor, and that is likely due to a marginally heavier bullet. They also brag about less recoil than a 300 Win Mag, which is kind of funny because that's like saying 223 has less recoil than a 308. Duh. Comparing the 300 Win Mag versus a short action doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I get that they're trying to sell this to hunters, but that comparison is weak at best. As we say, with all of these new cartridges, it doesn't really matter if no one is chambering guns for it, and off the bat, it seems that Browning, who sort of partnered with Winchester for this launch, has 21 different models of the X-Bolt alone chambered for this new cartridge. I'm skeptical of it taking off in a big way as a whole until we see a bunch of other manufacturers getting behind it, but time will tell, I suppose. Winchester has also announced a few other things, but since their product release video was a half an hour long and the website is a labyrinth to navigate and actually find good, solid info, I'm just going to skip it. Screw that. I'm not doing the work for them. I'm curious, though, what do you guys think about this new 6.8 Western cartridge? Is it something that gets you excited? Were you looking for something like this? Did you need a 6.5 Creedmoor? And then a little bit more? More? Creed? More? No? All right. And are the current offerings maybe not enough to handle your needs, or maybe they are? Sound off in the comments below, and let's talk about it. It's time now to fire up the minigun because we have a ton more news to cover this week. Also new from Browning is a semi-auto shotgun called the Maxis II. Being that it's the sequel to the Maxis, it has a bit of upgrades. The upgrades include a new cheek pad, a new recoil pad, rubber overmolding for more grip where you need it, a ramped trigger guard for lord knows what reason, enhanced controls, that's great, presumably to make the gun a little bit more easy to use in colder slash wetter conditions, and the best one of all, a screw cap on the magazine. Yes, that's actually a feature. I don't know why. That's on top of their already proven gas system, nickel Teflon action coating, and a really nice trigger. It's a Browning. It's going to be a nice gun. The gun comes in five different variants, all basic 
vastly like cosmetically different. The prices range from $15.29 for the blacked out version up to two grand for the Wicked Wing model. Moving on from there, FN has a new version of the 509 called the 509 LS Edge, or Long Slide Edge. See also Walther PPQ Q5 Match and the HK VP90R Long Slide. They're essentially all the same gun made by different brands. Really similar features. 5 inch barrel, better trigger, in this case a flat face, that's rad. Better grip texture, better iron sights cuts in the slide, and of course, optic mounting. All in all, it looks like a really solid gun, and the 509 definitely doesn't suck. The MSRP does sting a little at $14.99. Also in new stuff this week is ammo from Federal. I'll keep it brief. The Syntec line has added a 148 grain 38 Special, a 205 grain 10 millimeter, and a 95 grain 380. I'm excited. I really am genuinely excited about more 10mm offerings for sure. They also added a couple new handgun rounds to their hunting lineup. There is a 100 grain 327 Federal and a 200 grain 10 mil. Both are part of the Swift A-Frame line. And rounding out our rapid fire this week is a mountain, an absolute mountain of stuff from Magpul. We usually cover all of this stuff at our SHOT Show booth visit that we do every year with those guys, but I guess we'll cover it all from the home studio, home office, whatever we're calling this. There is a lot of stuff here, so I'll try to keep it simple. First is the new MBUS 3. These backup sites are a combination of the MBUS Pro sites and the previous gen MBUS and are sort of a slim trim version with a spring-loaded deployment. Pricing is 40 for the front and 60 for the rear. Then there is the K2 XL grip, which is a 25% larger version of the K2. Count me in for that. That one has an MSRP of 24 bucks. From there, we have the PRS Lite, which is a lightened version of the PRS Gen 3 at a full 10 ounces lighter. It's actually combined with the UBR in certain ways. The PRS stocks are great, and I'm sure this one won't suck either, and at MSRP of 120, which is literally half the price of the full-featured PRS Gen 3, this could be a home run for a lot of people. Imagine all the guys getting into precision stuff and want to get something a little more affordable. That's great. Next, we have the QR Rail Grabber, which is a quick release with compatibility for both Picatinny and Arca slash RRS rail systems. That goes for 80 bucks. That is a lot more than I thought it would cost. Moving along, they have two new P-Mags. One is a 10-round version of the standard with the same form factor of the full 30-round version. It's all about keeping compatibility between local restrictions and mag pouches. I'm trying to help out guys in banned states. They have an MSRP of 18 bucks. There's also a new 20-round version of the 300 Blackout Mags that have an MSRP of 15 bucks. And before we get into the really juicy stuff, they have a new knife for 240 bucks, which looks awesome, and I know a lot of guys love those, and some new eyewear that I can't really use because prescription lenses, and I haven't found anybody that makes them. And they go for 100 to about 150, depending on which version you get. Now, the stuff I've been holding back on. First is the MPBSL arm brace for the HK94 MP5 platform. That is a nice addition to their current MP5 stuff and has an MSRP of 160 bucks, putting it right in line with other braces. Then there's the new D50. Not one for the AR10, but one for the MP5 and one for Glocks. Finally, someone with a decent reputation making drum mags for these two guns. Honestly, these are almost more exciting than the next product I'm gonna show, almost, almost more exciting than this one. They have an MSRP of 120 bucks each. And honestly, one of the most exciting things I've seen in a long time needs a bit of a backstory. Back in 2008, at SHOT Show, Magpul had a demo gun called the FMG9, which was essentially a deployable gun that folded up into a tight little package and contained a Glock machine gun that also folded up. Side note, that folding action looks a lot like the full conceal thing that is now bankrupt. In the video, Drake Clark says that they don't have any plans to produce the gun, but wanted to show it off back in 2008. Fast forward 13 years, and not only am I fortunate enough to call Drake and a bunch of other guys at Magpul buddies, hey guys, 
But they're also going to make what is now called the FDP-9 and the FDC-9. The P and C indicate pistol and carbine versions of the gun. This is going to be done in partnership with Zevtech. Now, they've already said these won't be ready until 2022, but they wanted to tease everyone now. Uh, I get, I'm just, I'm really excited about this. I'm betting because of the nature of the gun, plus being sort of a hype beast in itself, it's going to cost a pretty penny when it does eventually hit the market, but holy crap, do I want to shoot one. Whew, that was a buttload of new stuff. An entire buttload. I want to hear what you guys are excited about down in the comments section because we just talked about a lot of stuff and we, you and I, have a lot to talk about about the new stuff that we just talked about. But wait, there's more. We also have some industry news we have to cover this week. First up, Cellmark, the parent company of Sightmark, Firefield, and Pulsar, announced that they are acquiring armor manufacturer BulletSafe. BulletSafe has been around since 2013 and has everything from like soft armor vests to armored ball caps. That's interesting in and of itself. I'm curious to see what they do with that brand. I'm, I'm not sure how that fits into what they're already doing, so that'll be interesting. Also in industry news, Aero Precision announced that they are relocating. It's only about 15 minutes away from their current Tacoma location, but they're moving to Lakewood, Washington to a new 268,000 square foot facility, and I suspect we'll see a lot of brands expanding over the coming months as the demand in the gun industry is still at an all-time high. In big-time gun industry news, CZ is reportedly attempting to acquire one of the oldest gun makers in the U.S., Colt. We don't have a ton of info on this one, but the word is that they are planning for a complete takeover of the brand. That, my friends, would be really interesting in a ton of different ways. Like, what would happen to Colt's military contracts? What would happen to the wheel guns? That would be cool. What about all those other products that they're either developing or have already released? Lots of questions that won't be answered right away. CZ puts out some incredible stuff too, so seeing them make Colt an actually successful brand again and get rid of all the corporate nonsense... That would be awesome as well. And rounding out industry news, the NRA has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy and are planning to relocate their current location in New York down to Texas. I think it's clear to many of us that this was coming for a long time, especially considering the lawsuit in New York trying to dismantle the org entirely. But either way, there is... Something here to pay attention to for the time being. Vertex makes some of the best EDC bags and gear around. Whether you're looking for a backpack, a messenger bag, or maybe something for your pup. They've got features like a rapid access weapon compartment, padded backing, a hot pull tab for quick access to the main compartment, and much, much more. Oh, and did I mention their jeans make my legs look better. <laughs> Seriously, I can do so many high kicks in these. And guys, if you want to get a huge discount, head over to Vertex, that's V-E-R-T-X dot com and use our code TGC to get a whopping 25% off everything. Go do it. GunTuber of the Week continues this week. If you don't know, GunTuber of the Week is a segment where I share a gun-related channel that by our standards, which are admittedly really high, puts out high-quality, informative, entertaining content on a regular basis. That being said, our GunTuber of the Week this time is We Like Shooting. Now, I'm sure some of you guys out there know them from their podcast, but they also put out some really solid gun videos, and on top of that, they've been good friends of TGC for a long time, even before TGC was a thing. We were buddies. They have a really fun and lighthearted approach and are genuinely likable people. Here's a clip. The SCS is extremely adjustable for cheek height, length of pull, and butt pad cant and vertical adjustments. It does have an illuminated reticle and that's got 10 positions, two of those being night vision. It takes a CR123A battery and that's gonna last for about 3,000 hours. But if you don't, Nick is gonna eat this nine millimeter round that we found at the range. If you guys are into that type of content, and I'm pretty sure you are, go find the link to that channel down in the description and get subscribed and be sure to tell them that TGC sent you. Now, 
After you click the like button, be sure to hit the secret affiliate link down in the description. That would be a massive help for us. And of course, don't forget to get subscribed for more gun news every week. And as always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. Oh, also leave a comment on whether you like this setup here. We're still working on it, so we would love to hear from you guys. Yep, it's over, but don't worry, you can click on the video up top to watch last week's show, and the one below that is the one that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. Check them out and let me know what you think.